Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins in a prison, where a man in a shirt, along with police guards, visits a mobster named Lee. The man in the shirt shows him pictures of the young people he has killed, and tells him that tomorrow he will pay for what he has done. Meanwhile, another prisoner, who is cleaning the floors, takes a knife from the bucket, and stabs a guard in the neck. The prisoner then takes a gun, and kills another police guard. A shootout breaks out, in which the prisoner kills a couple of guards but is then fatally wounded. Lee grabs the man in the shirt by the head, and slams against the door, knocking him unconscious. Subsequently, Lee breaks free, and challenges the man to hand-to-hand -hand combat. Being injured, the man is unable to fight Lee, and falls to the ground. Lee then frees the other prisoners, and suggests that they take their weapons and escape. Soon, the guards come face to face with the prisoners. A devastating shootout breaks out, in which all the men present die. Lee then appears and escapes from the prison. Two months later, Dr. Eileen is caring for a man, the film's protagonist, in a coma in a rural hospital on a small island. His identity and origins are unknown. He eventually wakes up and accidentally falls out of bed. Eileen wakes up, and begins to examine him. Unfortunately, he doesn't remember how he was injured, or even his name. As a result, he takes the name Ishmael, from the book Moby Dick that Eileen is reading. As Ishmael looks at the mirror, he has very brief flashbacks, in which he sees a woman shooting him in the face. The doctors then do checks on him, and Eileen gives him new clothes. Over the next few days, Ishmael begins to recover, and spends more and more time with Eileen. As they relax on the beach, Eileen reveals that he was found on the beach by a resident. The action shifts to a gang boss named Anto and his sidekick Bondi. They are waiting for Lee for some business, but the last one is late. Anto is outraged, but Bondi asks him to be patient. When Lee arrives, Anto gets straight to the point, and says he no longer wants to work with him, because the guns and stuff he sells him are of low quality. Meanwhile, outside, hand-to-hand -hand combat breaks out between rival gang henchmen. In the end, Bessie, Lee's man, easily defeats Anto's henchman. Rika, another henchwoman of Lee's, throws a knife at Anto's henchman, after which she starts fighting against the other men. Anto pulls a gun out of his pocket, and tries to kill Lee, but he sticks his chopsticks into his neck. Then Lee takes Anto's gun, and kills the last henchman of the rival gang. When he is about to kill Bondi, the latter tells him something crucial. He informs him that Ishmael, who was part of Lee's gang, has survived. Lee shoots him in the ear, and tells him to go to the hospital to investigate Ishmael. Bondi goes to the hospital, and starts acting aggressively. The security guard intervenes, but Bondi slaps him. Then Eileen appears and takes care of his ear. Bondi asks her where Ishmael is, but she doesn't want to reveal it. Then he threatens her, but fortunately, Ishmael arrives and grabs his hand. Bondi then takes a glass bottle, and throws it at his head, stunning him. He pushes Bondi against the wall, who pulls out a gun, but he grabs the magazine of bullets. Bondi, terrified by his abilities, quickly runs away. Eileen and Ishmael then travel to the city, and she suggests that he come with her to Jakarta. In the first place, the hospital is no longer a safe place, and he has bullet fragments inside his head, which they can get rid of by surgery in Jakarta. He states that he must first find out who he is, and what happened to him, after which he will join her. The next day, he accompanies her to the bus station. Lee's henchmen are watching them inside a car. When the bus departs, the henchmen start following it, thinking that he is inside. Instead, he takes a ride from a man on a moped. Later, the bus is stopped by Lee's men, who are looking for Ishmael. A henchman immediately kills the driver, and then they board the bus to search. Aline calls Ishmael, and reveals to him what is happening. Soon, the henchmen start shooting all the passengers. The only survivors are Eileen and a young girl. A henchman prepares to kill the little girl, but Eileen comes out of hiding, and begs him not to. Bondi asks her where Ishmael is, and she says he stayed in town. Ishmael reaches the bus on a moped. He goes inside in search of Eileen, but doesn't find her anywhere. Soon, Lee's men enter the bus to burn the bodies and get rid of the evidence. The henchman pulls out a machete, and tries to kill Ishmael, but the protagonist breaks his arm. Another thug enters and pours gasoline on Ishmael, and tries to light the lighter, but he pushes him away. The henchman tries to pick up the lighter, but Ishmael catches up to him, and puts a bullet in his eye. Then another minion enters with a torch in his hand and throws it on the ground. Ishmael smashes the back glass and jumps out of the bus. Next, he has to fight another minion, who tries to push Ishmael onto the bus. He defeats him and then kills another minion, slamming their head against the bus. Soon, 
police arrived behind him, and they hit him in the head, knocking him unconscious. Lee's minions take Eileen and the little girl to their prison. Bondi begins to talk too much and arrogantly, so he is killed by the henchman. The protagonist wakes up in an interrogation room. He is suspected of killing all the passengers on the bus, but he claims that he is only looking for his friend Eileen. The Interpol official then tells him about young people kidnapped by Lee's network, and raised to become loyal smugglers and criminal enforcers, in fact, Ishmael was one of these children. The official reveals that they managed to arrest Lee, when he was roaming the streets without weapons or bodyguards, but then he managed to escape. In addition, the official shows a photo in which Lee and Ishmael are together in a restaurant. The main character says he doesn't remember anything, and then suddenly the light goes out. The official gets up and goes to check, but is killed with a machete through the window. Lee's gang of assassins is storming the police station, in an attempt to kill Ishmael. The henchman with the machete goes inside, and tries to kill Ishmael, but he defends himself with the table, to which he is handcuffed. He then pushes the henchman with the table, and slashes his head with his own machete. Suddenly, someone throws a grenade into the police station, and he hides behind the table. After the explosion, the assassins enter to check if Ishmael is dead, but he appears from behind them, and kills them with a gun. Later, Ishmael tries to escape, but meets Lee's henchman at the exit. As they start shooting, Ishmael makes it in time to hide. Then the henchmen split up to search for him. He surprises one of them from behind, and a fight breaks out. He hides under a table, and the henchman starts shooting. When he runs out of bullets, the protagonist pounces on him and knocks him down. After a hand-to-hand -hand combat, he shoots the henchman in the face. It all ends with Ishmael knocking remaining minions to the ground. After the fight, Ishmael has flashbacks in which he sees the two minions he just killed. Long ago, when he worked for Lee, they were friends. Lee visits Eileen and calls his henchman's phone, to tell him not to kill Ishmael. To his surprise, Ishmael answers the phone, and says he is still alive. Lee grabs Eileen by the neck, and she shoves scissors into his shoulder. He pulls them away and releases his grip. As Ishmael goes to Lee, we see flashbacks from when he was training with Lee's henchman. Ishmael arrives in a jungle, and as he walks, he comes to a well. There he meets Bessie and learns that Ishmael Bessie and Rika train together. Lee would starve the children by putting them in the well. After a few days, he would throw out food, and the one who had killed all the others for food would be let go. Ishmael tries to convince Bessie not to support Lee, but Bessie refuses out of loyalty. The two begin to fight, and Ishmael gets the better of them, striking Bessie with a powerful blow to the head. Realizing that he is about to die, Bessie walks to the beach, and dies as he surveys the landscape. Ishmael follows him to the beach, but Rika appears behind him, and starts shooting him as he flees. She discovers Bessie's dead body, and then pursues Ishmael. When she finds him, Ishmael throws sand in her face, and grabs her gun. At that moment, he remembers that it was Rika who shot him and put him into a coma. He orders her to take him to Lee, but she refuses, and challenges him to a fight. Despite Rika's numerous wounds, Ishmael eventually prevails. He then asks her to stop, because he doesn't want to kill any more. She takes advantage of his distraction, and pulls out a gun, but cannot shoot him again. Instead, she shoots away from him, wasting her bullets. In panic, he mortally wounds her by impulsively throwing a knife. He comforts her in her last moments, and then calls Lee, telling him that he now remembers everything. Next, Ishmael discovers Lee's hideout. Meanwhile, a henchman is about to assault Eileen in the hideout. The girl stops him by throwing a plate at his head, and Eileen cuts him with a fragment of the broken plate. Eileen then takes the automatic rifle, and kills the henchman. They go out into the hallway, and kill another henchman. While escaping, Eileen runs into other minions, but fortunately, Ishmael arrives and kills them. They meet and Eileen initially antagonizes Ishmael, because of their relationship that ended with her imprisonment. He manages to convince her that he is no longer the man he once was, and they embrace. Lee however arrives, and is furious that Ishmael killed both Bessie and Rika, who he considered his favorites. The two then engage in a tough fight, which Lee manages to dominate because of his strength and experience. Eventually, he repeatedly hits Ishmael in the head, stunning him. Lee then pounces on him and throws a punch at him, but he dodges it. Subsequently, Ishmael manages to gain the upper hand. Nevertheless, he falls to the ground exhausted, as Lee escapes outside. The protagonist pursues him, and the fight now resumes in the jungle. It all ends with Ishmael impaling Lee on a jagged branch of a tree trunk. Lee makes one last attempt to kill Ishmael by impaling him on the same trunk, but Eileen saves him. Lee eventually succumbs to his wounds and dies. Eileen heals in the hospital, 
while Ishmael is still seriously injured. However, he wakes up with Eileen by his side, and she smiles at him. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.